we're here. So thanks for joining me today. Now, you, some of you may have heard, we have Tom Mooney on the phone. They haven't been able to figure out how to get his camera up um, at the home office. So he's going to be on the phone with us. So Tom, when I see somebody, just make sure that you unmute yourself. Tom, because I'm going to mute everybody. Right? Okay. Uh, all right. So I know a lot of exciting things are happening. This is a, a project that um, a lot of work has been going into for the last several months, probably last year, <laughs> I would even say. Um, and I know a lot of some of some of you are like, what is this email that one of my customers got? And it's like, hmm, how did you get that? Because we had we thought we had this fail proof method of doing a test. And we had a, little, a couple of hiccups, but all hiccups that could be explained, fortunately. Um, but for those of you who were with me with the previous company, you guys know we were able to communicate to you guys, to all of your retail customers, right? Send them offers. Um, if they purchase through your website, we then were able to communicate to them. Well, Mia Bellows has never had that type of platform to be able to do that. Well, now they do. So I'm really excited to first announce that, that now we're gonna be able to um, really reach out to so many people. I mean, when we say thousands and thousands of untapped customers, right? That from many, many moons ago, that have never heard from Mia Bellas. They've probably heard from you, the distributor, but they've never heard from the company directly with any kind of, you know, hey, look at this featured product or here's a special just for you um, type of, of communication. So I'm really excited that right now we're going to be able to do that. Now, the difference with what we're working with is, if you guys remember, we used to be able to have it where, okay, Jody, an email that went to your customers, it also looked like it was coming from you, right? So it would have your website link. It would have, this is from Jody. So that really, they didn't even know it was coming from the company. They thought it was coming from their distributor. This system, we cannot do that. So that's why we're handling it a little bit different. Now, the first test that we did, and I'm gonna show you just a minute. The first test that we did was a list of customers that were previous, Tom, was it, 2018 and before was the list of customers? Uh, essentially, we, we just had one test list um, of like thousands and thousands of names of some very old customers that in previous times had purchased um, retail from one of the Mia Bella websites. Uh, it could have been came through the main site, but most of them were just from distributors that are no longer with us, or or they were people that had just um, even even purchased one candle. Um, it, it, like like I said, we used uh, a test list that we had that was old, um, and what we are doing is we cross reference against all known active accounts um, within with, within the company that are obviously tied to the distributor accounts. And essentially what happened is out of like 7,000 emails that went out, there were two things that slipped through. And the reason they had slipped through was it was someone who was, it was just a scenario that we would never have thought of that happened. And it did happen. So now we even have that scenario covered. So we've thought of every possible scenario to cover to make sure that that these are not cross-referencing with um, anything that's coming in through distributor retail accounts that are active. So an example of what Tom's referring to, like say, um, I know, say Monica, I think it was Elena. Elena had a customer. Well, Elena used to be a distributor years ago and she had customers that had purchased through her website years ago. So her customer got that email and Elena's like, what is this? Is this spam? Da, 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 da. So that's where we're like, okay, but literally I think I received four people reaching out to me saying, what is this? Is this spam? So I know not a lot of people got it that were, you know, that are a current distributor or a distributor had a customer use their email address. We, we do that all the time too, right? So they use their email address when they purchase through the website. So then the distributor is getting it going, why am I getting this email? So those are the kind of things that we work through um, for this test to figure out. And another thing is it's supposed to show us coming from Mia Bella's and it came from Peak. 
So that kind of freaks them out a little bit too. Like, why is Pete communicating to my customers? You know, and and so those were things that surfaced that I was like, okay, we need to have a call. <laughs> and that <laughs> was an with- and that was an accident. <laughs> That that was, that was, a, that, that was it, it was not it was not to come out from Pete's Pete's email was attached to the test, and there were some issues within the system. Um, again, that's why we call it a test. <laughs> but the first, but every single thing we had tested, um, it, it it defaulted back to Pete's email, which we were using the test, and nobody realized it until the email's gone out. Now that's been that's that's been fixed and solved <laughs> three minutes after it actually happened. So <laughs> that'll never happen again. Yeah, so those were just a couple, those are, those are the scenarios that almost that everyone that, that came to me with something, we could explain it. Okay, now I get it because this was in the past, but this, this is why the email came through and that's why you got it. So um, with that being said, I did want to at least show you, for, for those of you who are going, Kim, what the heck are you talking about? I don't know what email you're talking about, so we're going to show you. So here's just a couple of templates um, that Tom's been working on. And um, for those of you, those of you, I don't, those at Fling probably met Tom, but Tom is our graphics guy among many other things. But I work really closely with him back at the home office um, as far as doing the images. He helps me, you know, I get the, I do the concepts for the labels and he makes them perfect for me. And so he just does a lot of great work. All the pretty stuff that you see, he is involved in. So he is an amazing partner um, back there at the home office. So. So here's just a sample of what, I think this was the one that went out, was on the lilac. I could be wrong, it could be lavender. But so here's just a featured fragrance, right? So um, it has the candles, Mia Melts, and Sale across the top. And then you go, here's another one that's about lavender. Again, just another featured fragrance with the shop now. And then here's our fragrance of the month. So here's another one that we've been working on, like, hey, this would be a great thing to do on the first of the month to all of your customers so that they have these pretty images and the content around um, what our fragrance of the month is. So that's another one. And then here's just a, another emphasis on sunflowers, right? That was another new fragrance. And then here's what, uh, here's a rose garden one. And then jasmine. You see, we focused a lot on the spring because that was coming to an end. We have some inventory left on that. And then here was the offer that was at the end of the email and the and the content that's on here. So you can see we had this code that really anybody could use this code, um, but it was you know obviously targeted to this group of customers. And all they had to do is spend fifteen dollars or more, and they could get this ten percent off with that promo code. And then just a, a real simple message at the end. You know, again. This is such a huge opportunity for us, right? Because we have all these customers that probably don't even know there's all these new and fun, exciting things happening at Mia Bella. So that's really how we started it is, have you heard the buzz? You know, Mia Bella's has a new look, new fragrances, new programs, and more. Um, we saw the same great products featuring our all natural palm wax and exceptional scents that provide the best fragrance experience. Mia, Mia Bella's recently celebrated their 20th anniversary and still remains a clean burning candle pioneer in the industry. And then it just has to, to check out our new spring summer arrivals. Now, what happens here is when they click on this, they are going to the corporate website. That's why we are trying to be very careful to only send it to past customers that really, they're not tied to anybody. You know, that's how Pete did the list is they were direct to the company and did not have, uh, at, the, at the time we did this, did not have an upline or a distributor. And then also you see here too that they can unsubscribe at any time, as simple as that, right? They can they can do that. So, with that being said, uh, you know we talked about that that uncapped potential of all these customers, but really the other step was how do we give this tool to you, the distributor, so that you can use this content, use these images, be able to edit it and send it out to your customers so it's coming from you and have your link to your website, right? So that's what we want. We want them going to you, to your website to purchase. So Tom's going to talk a little bit more about that, of how, how that's going to happen. And again, we're not going to do this in this call to train you, but he's going to tell you the concept of what will happen, and then we'll have a, another training to show you how to do it, okay? So Tom, go ahead. Okay. Um... You got me? My live? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, 
you're basically going to have three separate scenarios that um, a distributor could be working with. Um, the first is the first um, the first scenario would be that, and I know some of you are doing this already, are running your own um, email platform, whether it's a Mailchimp, uh, Robly, Aweber, one of those programs, and you're already doing your own email marketing. Uh, this content, what we're going to do is we'll we'll set up a folder somewhere where when we send the content can be loaded in uh, to that folder that you can retrieve it. Um, it's all self-contained. As you see that the spring fragrance with the lilac on there, that is a 100% self-contained image. It's just one image. So essentially, if you're going to send an email out that would be um, just lilac and you'd want to add another candle to the bottom of it, um, say lavender, uh, which is what we did, you're loading two images. That's that's all you're doing because they're self-contained. Um, the images are specifically set up to be mobile ready so that they'll display perfectly on a mobile, on any type of mobile platform. Um, we've traced what goes on here as far as what happens in the field. We're up over like 75% of mobile viewing. So really 75% of the people who are viewing are probably either viewing on some type of tablet or some type of cell phone. So this mobile ready content um, really comes into play uh, because you have, we want people to be able to read it on the cell phones. And, and that's where you can get into some trouble depending on how you're doing stuff. So that's kind of scenario number one, that if you're using an existing autoresponder platform, you don't need to switch the platform. You can, you can use these images very easily within uh, the existing platforms. And the images will come in two ways, one with the shop now and one without the shop now, for whatever reason, if you don't want a shop now button and you want to reference them to your main site or you want to reference them somewhere else, we'll, re we'll remove that button just so that there's generic stuff there too, which, which quite frankly could be posted on anything. Um, the second scenario is we use a platform called Aweber. And that's that's our email platform. Um, it is free uh, for for you know if you're doing like under 500 emails, it's free. Even if even if you bump up over 500 emails, it's very inexpensive. I mean, the if you made one sale a month, it would it would pay for the ten dollars just just to have the account. If you're using an Aweber platform. All as we will do is you don't even need the images. What will happen is you'll get a code and that code will be the identical email that we are sending and it will automatically load into your system. So you, you would literally have to do nothing. All as it would do was load the existing email that we're sending, it would load into your system. And then the only thing that you have to do when you go in and look at it is you'd have to look at the copy at the bottom and you may want to personalize that message. All that message, uh, uh, you know, that message, you may want to put your own personalized message in there. That's just text. So you'd simply just drag it, retype whatever, whatever personalized message you'd want to send out to your people. And that's it. And then the links, there's, there's just when in any auto or any you know email platform you'd see, there's just the links where it goes. So if it's lilac and lavender, you would go to your own distributor site. You'd go to the lilac page. You'd just uh, copy and paste the HTML from the top, and then you'd paste it in. And all you're doing is because it it would come in with the main with with the generic um, with the generic site. So it would be tied to our site. And then you're just changing it. You're just redirecting it to your site. So technically when that email goes out through the responder, it's just gonna go out uh, right to you and all the linking would go back to your site. Um, so that's kind of the second scenario is, and that's with using the, the Aweber platform, which is very, very easy to use. And we're also gonna do some training um, on that and and maybe even on another platform so you can just see how it works if you're using MailChimp or you're using one of the other um, type of platforms. Um, the third way that we can do this is email platforms by and large 
Um, they can be a little intimidating at first, but once you get to run them, they're so easy to run. But with that said, um, you know, we may have a lot of distributors in the field, especially distributors that are just starting out that say, mm, I'd like to be able to use my private email account, whether it's a Gmail account, um, they run Thunderbird on their computer, they run Outlook, um, you know, or they, if they're on a Mac, they run the, the general Mac program that's there. There's a couple different, uh, the Microsoft 365 is out there. There's, there's a couple different platforms that people just use for their private email. You have to have some type of platform to retrieve your email. These files, um, like the embedded file that you're seeing right on the screen right now that says lemon cake, again, it's one file. These files will very simply embed in an email that you can send to your address book. And I've worked it out on Thunderbird and it's very, very simple. Um, it, it's essentially, you know, you just put your message on the top, you create a table underneath it, you drag it over and it's there. And then you'd put your, you know, any, any message that you have underneath it, um, your signatures uh, and your footers would automatically load when the email goes out. And with just a simple, with, with a couple little tricks, um, knowing how to hit the carriage returns on your text, it goes out to the mobile phones and it looks perfect. You cannot, you, you literally almost cannot tell that, that it has not come from an autoresponder. It's just come from you're using your private email. Um, I have a few things to work through on Gmail. Um, you know, to make sure that we, we can find everything and that it's easy to load. But so even for someone who's just starting out and let's say I look at my address book, I got like 40 names in there that I'd like to send once a week. We'll have some training um, to be able to show you how to easily do this. I did it. I counted four steps to be able to do it from Thunderbird. I, I counted four steps to take it out. And you can even put a hyperlink in. We, we, you, you can even just put a shop, a shop now hyperlink in if you'd like that particular person to be able to reference to your own personal website. So we kind of have all the scenarios covered. Um, and I think, you know, one of the most important things is for the people who are already doing things now, um, the content's going to be available and it's just plug and go. It's, it, it's, it's really that simple. And if you would run into any problems whatsoever, um, most of the platforms do, uh, you know, free customer service, like Aweber does it. And I know Aweber inside and out. If, if there'd be a problem with the Aweber, I'll, I'll know what it is in two minutes. Um, you know, you can reach out to me or or because we, we may find a problem with, with a platform or this isn't working that right. That's not working right. It's it's it's, it's an easy fix. It's it's a really easy fix. I, I can't I, I can't stress enough how simple how simple these platforms have become and how simple it is to get the stuff out. Um, quite frankly, when you look at some of the platforms, just getting your names in there and, and learning like an organ, the organizational tricks um, for managing your lists and stuff like that is more difficult than actually sending content. When you, especially when you take something like this that's self-contained. Um, and you may see stuff where you're subscribed on different lists and stuff like that. And you're getting email solicitations for, for maybe catalogs or different things that you purchase, a, a company that you purchase through online. And you'll see, and it looks, you know, super complicated and there's all these different breakdowns and stuff. And, and, and we can complicate things. But with this, I think we're going to try to stick with these self-contained type images. And as we go, we're going to try to keep them as relevant as possible. We're going to try to do stuff for all the limited edition candles that come out. Um, because that's that's relevant. We obviously will have stuff prepared for um, the fragrance of the month as as that comes out. So you know we're we're really going to stay on top of this as far as having everything relevant and and having everything you know come out um, on time. So that's kind of that's kind of the scenario of uh, you know what what we're going to be able to do, and I, I think that you know, with, with content, content is king and mobile ready is the king of kings. And, and that's unfortunately where we, we have to look at things right now and we have to say, 
if we're sending content out and then the people look at it on the cell phones and they can't decipher it or you can't read it or it's not formatting properly, um, that's where you kind of get in trouble. So we're going to safeguard all these things when they go out to make sure that it's all tested mobile. In, in fact, I, I just saw a user flash up that they use Aweber. It, you know from your Aweber tool that Aweber previews and, and shows us um, what it's going to do on a mobile. So we know um, exactly if there's a problem, we know how to go in and fix it ahead of time before it goes out. Yeah, and Tom, you also too um, have done a lot of research on words and things that we can and we or should not use, right? That help prevent spamming and things of that nature too, right? Yeah, anything that's going to come from us, um, when you're looking at this lemon cake, what that is, is that's an embedded .png file. So there's no words to pick up. Uh, when you look at the bottom of the email, um, you know, we're, you're, you're going to be real safe um, with, with anything like this. They're, they're really not getting picked up. Um, the, there's, there's a scenario with if you are dealing with an existing list, and these are people that you've emailed consistently, you know, week after week after week for like the past year, they're whitelisted within your system. So you're pretty safe to send um, any type of uh, subject titles and things like that, that have like last chance to buy this or, or some of the, you know, words that may get picked up as spam that look like, you know, sales slash spam emails, you're pretty safe. Where, where you want to be a little careful is when you're just starting out and you're sending stuff to people that have never received your emails before the most important thing is to get that first or second email through um, so that uh, then the system automatically whitelists you and the stuff is going to come through. So that's where you want to be a little careful and uh, uh, you know a little general. Um, scenario I could put out, you do a show, you've collected just, just by people that you meet, giving out business cards and stuff like that, you collected 12 new emails at that show. Um, you'd want to come back and put that into a separate list and you'd want to send that list out as some type of personalized email. Thanks for you know, meeting you and stuff. But you'd want to try to remove any hardcore sales type of stuff out of that because, again, the goal from these first the first stuff that goes out to somebody that you've never emailed before is to get that email through and it doesn't get blocked and that they open it. And then they're whitelist, you're whitelisted within their system and all the rest of the emails are going to come through. So then you can just take that list, merge it into your main list with everybody that's on it. And then you just go from there. And so like you would recommend, like, I know when we were first doing this, I'm like, well, Tom, we need to say special offer just for you. And you're like, no, we don't want to do that. You want to, we, they probably want to focus more on the fragrances or, you know, the fragrance of the month or, you know, more words like that, that don't have anything to do with sales or offers or opportunities. Is that correct? Yes. I, I, I think it's just um, when you're first starting out with this, you want to be careful. Um, there's also, if you Google it, if you Google the spam words that come up, I can even send a sheet out that, that has some of the stuff. There has some, some suggestions, but really, Really, what it comes down to right now is uh, most most stuff will will come through. Um, a lot of times, what it's doing is flagging the sender, and that's that's where you know the ISPs are really trying to crack down. Is you know these people who are sending millions of emails out, uh, you know, as as spam, they're trying to shut those accounts down. So we don't find too much trouble. And and again, I saw somebody that was an Aweber um, user on there. Aweber disabled their spam checker. I, I mean, and, and I think MailChimp it has done the same where it, it's such an insignificant problem these days, um, unless you're doing something that's really, really, you know, um, obvious, uh, they'll, you know, it, it, it'll go through. So the spam, the spam checkers aren't even, aren't even running on these systems anymore because I talked to Aweber and they said, they said, we, we find we just don't have trouble. And, 
and one thing with the email platforms is the restrictions on those platforms now are so tight that when you're loading emails in, if there's going to be a problem, they're going to flag it. They'll they'll flag stuff. They'll they'll flag your outgoings or they'll flag um, if if there's a duplicate list or if you pulled things from someone else's list or something like that. Uh, the web, you know, the the conductivity of the web now is is so great that they can see other lists that have may have been flagged or names that have been flagged for sending stuff out and uh, it'll get flagged. <laughs> so, but, but it, it's for what we're doing and, and the way our content reads, um, we're, we're very, very safe. We're, we're very, very safe. Well, do you wanna take a few minutes and open this up for some questions? I'm gonna stop sharing so we can see their faces to see if anyone have, I mean, obviously, we can't go into the training of how you do this step by step, but we will have that training, right? As Tom mentioned, because um, some of you are very familiar with this, that you already do it through your Robly or Constant Contact or whatever you're doing. Um, but to some of you, you might be saying, "What? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'd love to do this, but I'm going to need some help. And that's why we'll have that training. Um, so we'll set something up with Tom uh, moving forward, but are there any questions right now about what we're doing, any concerns, anything I can answer for you, um, or Tom can answer while we've got him on, on the call. And just unmute yourself, guys, because I think everyone's muted, but. I have a question. Yeah. There okay. you are, I see you, okay. Okay, I just typed it, but then I thought, then you're all, oh, unmute yourself. So, okay, so I have a couple different avenues for platforms, but with this new thing from the company, I had never heard of AWeber. So I was just talking to Jody about signing up. So is there a certain platform that I should use versus like Robly, MailChimp, AWeber, that's going to work best with the emails coming from Mia Bella? Uh, well, first of all, to the, the, the speak in general terms, um, all the platforms work and they work perfectly because they're all running on the same type of, of, of system platform. So it's just a matter of how they do things and how they, they structure that stuff. With that said, um, AWeber is known as having very simple interfaces to use. And because we're using that account um, with AWeber, we'll be able to send out for, for every AWeber user, we'll be able to send out uh, a code. And what that code does is you just essentially open new message, you drop that code in, and then it loads precisely what we are sending. So you don't have to do anything. Yeah, I mean, literally, literally it just comes in and it's there and it's it's usable there's there's it's it's set up the mobile the mobile end of it is is perfected all as you would have to potentially do is evaluate the text that's at the bottom and say well i'd like to put my own personalized message in there and again it's just essentially no no different than writing an email you're just changing that and obviously with any of the emails these are going to come in without um without the hyperlinks. The AWeber would come in with a hyperlink, but it's going to come in with just a generic hyperlink. You just go in and change that hyperlink to, uh, to, your, to your own website and you can direct it wherever you want, whether you want to direct it to the candle specific, you want to direct it to the candle directory, you want to direct it to the front page. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. And it's, it's so simple. When you're, when you're literally looking at the email, the URL box is sitting right there on the side so that you can see it. And if you do it, you can't do it wrong because if, if you put something in and for whatever reason, you miss a letter or, or you miss something, AWeber goes out and sends a test first and they all do that. The, the Robly, it, Constant Contact, they'll all do that. So they'll flag you right away. They'll say, you know, not deliverable. So you, there's no way that you can send something out that doesn't work. It's, it's impossible because the system checks it before it goes out. And as, as if, if you've used these platforms, you know, you go to your test and preview where it's going to show you your mobile preview and it's going to let you send a test email to yourself. 
and and that's the safest thing is you always want to send a test email to yourself and you want to make sure that that email is on your mobile phone so that you can look at it on your mobile phone okay so I'm so reporting, reporting through um a weber as far as because that's you know the stats that they get for open rates and things like that what what kind of reporting does it have everything i i mean i mean literally it 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 has all the same I've I've used a Mailchimp account. Um, it's it's almost identical. Uh, there are some uh, there are some of the more expensive um, platforms that uh, will will show some integrated click through type of things and stuff like that and analyze it for stuff like this because we're dealing with small volumes. You're not dealing with hundreds of thousands of emails. That information tends to be um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's not the, it's not the most reliable because of the, the small sample sizes, but everything else it, it's going to give you, it's going to give you the bounce rate. So you're going to know if you loaded, I was, I, I was at the, a trade, you know, a show and I collected 15 emails. I send a test out through my system. One of them comes back. Well, you know that it's going to bounce. It's either a typo or the email's not active or you know how to flag it. And then it's going to give you um, what's called an open rate. So you'll you'll look and, and it'll tell you how many were, were physically opened. And then it gives you a click through rate. So that'll tell you that they clicked something in the meet in the email to the to direct yourself over. Um, and, and so that's, that's essentially what it is. And then there's stuff where, you know, for complaints and different things like that, but, but nobody sends out an email campaign where if you're sending out like a couple thousand or you're sending to people that someone doesn't click the, a, a complaint button or anything like that. So that stuff is negligible. Um, and the more you know these people and the more you send to them, the higher your open rate is gonna be. If they're familiar with the site, you may not see a huge advance in the click-through because quite frankly, some of these customers that if you've been, if you've already been in contact with them, probably have your distributor, your, your Miabella distributor site already bookmarked. So a lot of people will just simply, you know, they see email come through, they see stuff going when their browser's open, they'll just drag down and, and you're bookmarked already in their system. So the click-through rate is, is depending on how well you know these people, you know, because a lot of people will bookmark you um, in, in their system. With that said, it still, it still registers it. So it, it, it has all the, all the stats that you could want. And the most important thing is, is to see the bounces or to see the stuff comes back so that you can remo remove an email that, that's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. and just, and you, when you talk, about, like Jody, you send out um, a newsletter, right? Through your, I think you do it through Roadly, correct? Yeah. So like I could see, like when you talked about the more advanced and I don't know what Roadly has, but um, I just remember with the previous company, when we would send a newsletter out, it would tell us what articles they clicked on. So like if we knew, if you had, a, you know, something about sponsoring or opportunity, if there were people that clicked on that, you'd know how I want to reach out to them and see if they have questions, because I at least know they showed some interest by clicking on that. Um, but for like these type of emails, literally, it's going to be more focused right now on product. Um, you know, but and it won't have all these different links. It will be one message. It won't be multiple messages. So, you know, just so that if that helps you decide on how how much reporting you need. And Joe, you could probably speak more to Roadly and what kind of reporting they have. I, I'm not familiar with them. Yeah, it's it, they have all that. It's if it, they're actually I've been looking at both. I've been with Roadly for a really long time, and I was just looking at pricing because my numbers are pretty high. So when I looked at uh, a Weber, I was like, oh, that's way higher than I pay for Robley. But um, I'm also kind of grandfathered in to Robley. So when I look at current prices, they're very similar. So, uh, you know, it kind of just depends on where you're at. I, uh, my concern is, you know, as long as people understand as you, as you build, because the goal is to build your customer base, right? Um, you've got to look right now, you might have only you know, a hundred or, or less, but the goal is to eventually, so you have to be prepared 
that your numbers are going to go up. So is the cost of this service. Um, and, but I guess the, you should be happy if that's happening because you're probably <laughs> having more sales. So you can probably afford to pay more. So, um, but Robly does all of that. I am kind of looking for me, it's a little different. Like Shelly said, I've been with Robly so long and I've built my emails and they're so, once you start doing it, it is easy, like Tom said. And I think with A Weber and having that one picture, send it, you know, keep it real simple, start that way. And then, um, you know, go from there. I don't think it matters, Shelly, as far as your question, go with whatever you think is best. And um, sounds like with that code, A Weber might be the way to go. My recommendation is if if you're using if if you're really set up and and like let's say for at least six months or a year you're using an existing platform like Robly, there's there's no reason to have to go through the whole process of moving all your stuff over and reorganizing it, um, simply because you're you you're already doing this. You obviously have content and specific things that you like to send and that you're sending. This stuff can just be supplemental type of information where you can look at something and you can say. Ooh, this is cool at the beginning of the month or that may really help out is like with the limited edition candles and stuff like that, where you have something that you can just drop in and, and, and not have to worry about doing anything. You, you just have it, drop it in, link it. It's gone. So I, I, I if you're familiar with the platform, like with Robley, you're not going to gain anything by going to AWeber. Um, the AWeber, I think, will help would help somebody if they're saying, I'd like to start out with this brand new. Um, it just it just saves all the steps of going in and manually making a table that you have to drag an image to and stuff like that because it's it's just going to come in identical to to what you have and and you know your biggest challenge is just sending it out on a test. That's it and making sure that your text is fine at the bottom and stuff like that and that's it. I agree. Yeah. Love it. Any Thank other questions? You so much. You're welcome, Shelly. And two guys, I mean, another thing, I mean, you maybe I don't report this out, but total web sales for the company are less than 10% of our overall sales. So if you look at the potential that this can open up for for everybody, you know, to be able to, to get your website. And now that you're getting 25%, you know, instead of the 20%, it makes a big difference too um, to your paycheck. So you know, I just got really excited when, you know, they, cause I remember, I think I sent Jody just the image. She's like, why are you sending me this? And I said, I want to cry happy tears. Cause look how pretty this is. We're going to be able to send these out. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, cause we just haven't been able to do this. And, you know, just a huge thank you to, to Tom and Pete for figuring this out and being able to offer an, yet another opportunity for you guys to grow your business, because that's what this is about. You know, it's about getting to your, you getting to your customers. We don't want your customers. We can't help your customers. <laughs> you can help your customers. So we want to make sure too that we're doing everything right, get the training so that you feel comfortable doing what you're doing, that it's going to the right people. And that's why we love tests, right? So you can make sure you go in and you click on everything, make sure it's clicking where you thought you wanted them to end up and, and all that good stuff too. But, um, and like Tom said, it might sound a little overwhelming to people who've never done it, but it really is you know, a really simple less than five step process for, I, for the majority of that yeah, we'd be doing. So and, and I I, I have one I, I have one thing to lend to this before you sign off. And, and this is just something that if you're talking to people in your downlines and, and, and you have somebody who really hasn't done this before and, and they're looking at this process and they're saying, like, like you said, it could be daunting at the beginning. You're saying, well, geez, you know, my, I, I only have like 40 or 50 people. Um, you know, I'm starting out slow. I'm doing things. But the, the, the thing that... Um, I would sell it on and I've, I've worked on, I've worked with several of these before and, and the thing is it's a cumulative process. And the, the thing is when you're going out and you're sending the emails out, there's always gonna be that first time that that person buys as a result of an email that you sent out and, and that triggered a sale. And you've had you've had the work for that. You've had to send that email. You'd have to put that fresh person on there. Six months down the road, when they make that second purchase, 
you you haven't had to sell that it's already been sold and that's the beauty of of doing the email marketing from the standpoint of the distributors because as you build your list you're going to get repeat sales and that's how it snowballs so as your list grows that person who may have been number 20 on the list you know 18 months in has now purchased four times off your website you have a brand new person coming in on uh, on your list and you've sent them something for the first time your hope is that you know 12 to 18 months down that person has purchased four to five and so that's when you get two years out with this it really starts to snowball it's it's um if you could imagine taking your numbers and saying I, I made $100 and I increased 20% these last two months, okay? Well, that's not that much money. But if you've made retail and you've done $800 or $1,000, I've increased 20% these past two months. Now that's a significant amount of money. So it's just a little bit of stick to with it um, to get started and to realize that, you know, as you grow with this and people repeatedly buy um, you know, from your platforms, it, it can grow and it can grow quick. And that's what we all want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, repeat so, business. Yes, repeat, repeat business. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. And, and, and the strange thing is, is sometimes, you know, because we have such busy lives and we're just, people are inundated with so many different emails and so many different offers, so many stuff, the reason you want to constantly be in touch with them is so that you don't lose track. And, and, and that's the thing where, you know, by just doing a regular routine of, of rotating emails out, you're always there when that person needs to buy a candle. You're always, they're always aware of, of, of who you are, especially if it's somebody that you don't know. If it's somebody that you just met at a show and, and you don't really know them, you want to make sure that, that you know, hey, it's Christmas time and uh, I met you in the summer, but man, I want you to buy off my, all, all, all your Christmas stuff off my site. So it's like it, it, there's a consistency to it. Not too consistent. I mean, not overwhelming people, but there is a consistency factor to it that if you're in front of somebody, you know, every once in a while in, in a given month. And, and uh, it's, again, e each person has their comfort level with, with how much they want to send out. Um, but yeah, you always want to be there, especially in the, especially in the good seasons where it's in the fall. So as far as the templates or the, you know, the pictures, the picture or whatever, how will we have access to those? Like, will they be emailed to us or will they be in the Bella Builders or in order for us to make our emails? And another question, the 10% off thing, is that something, you know, I mean, can we, are we allowed to use that or let our customers use that even though we may not be, maybe we're doing our own email. Can we use that code this month? What's the end date on that code, Tom? Do you know? We, we didn't, there's no end date on that right now. That, that's an, it's, an, it's an open code. Um, that would be a question that, that um, Bobby, Bobby would have to answer how we're going to rotate in different offers and stuff like that. The 10% is probably not going to be the only thing. Uh, at different times, um, our, our sale or our clearance bin fills up. So there'll probably be things related to that as well. Um, for promotion, that that would be something to you know. I you know what I don't even think we, we kind of didn't get get to that yet. Yeah. Um, as I, as far as the delivery, Jody, what's ever comfortable for you? If 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 you want a folder in the back of uh, you know a, a, a fold a folder that's in that's in the back office, um, that's what we can do. And the stuff any anything that we send will be in that folder within 24 hours and it'll be with the shop button on it and with not the shop button for whatever reason if somebody wants to send um generic type of things out uh through their own private emails or something like that some of the emails do not let you um do the hyperlink on the image or it's a little tricky and we just take the shop now off there so it wouldn't trigger somebody hitting you know more or less hitting hitting the button on their cell phone trying to trying to get it to forward 
So they'll be in there as generic and they'll be in there with the shop now on. Okay. Yeah. I just ask about the code because I know my team will ask and I don't, I want to make sure that that's not being, you know, abused or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just, well, I would say if, if your customer wants to go purchase for 10%, let them. <laughs> I, I agree with you a thousand percent, but I just, I always believe in asking first before doing. <laughs> Um, and, and I can ask forgiveness from Bob. I'm just saying, hey, it's out there. And, you know, I, I probably be asked them, well, hey, do you want this to just end the end of May? Because obviously it's always good to have an end date because if you just keep it open, there's no sense of urgency. Right. So obviously we want to have, have something that gets a little sense of urgency on it. But yeah, right now I don't see any problem with that. And, and as far as the templates, what I'll do is I'll set up, I'll have Brian set up a folder like email campaigns in the back office and then I'll have it by year. So we'll have like 2022. So anything that's going in there, um, I'll have them put in that folder. We could even break it down by month if we wanted to, if that makes it easier, because it could get a little, little jumbled. Um, and then I'll do like an, I could probably do just an album in um, Facebook, in our Bella Builder group too, and just put an album with that in there as well. Because you guys may have noticed, like, this is Jody's idea. I did the event in there this time because I wanted to make sure if you couldn't find it, you can always go into our events. And I have the event the Zoom information in there with the image of the meeting. So I'm trying to use that more too, so that you guys, you know, if you don't have it at your fingertips, you always know you can go and check there um, as well. So yeah, we'll put it in both places because we know not everybody's on Facebook, um, but everybody emails. <laughs> so we'll make sure that we put that in both, in both places so that you guys have access to it. So great question, great question. Anything else before we wrap it up? And we'll let you know too when the training will be too. For those of you who, who, who are not familiar with doing this whole process, we'll make sure we get that training on the books as soon as possible um, so that you guys have that tool as well. All right, well, thanks Tom for joining us today. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, thank everybody. <laughs> um, and have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be thank talking you. to you Friday. We have Friday, I think our June fragrance of the month you'll be finding out. So look forward to that. <laughs> so have a great day, everybody.